said, I looked up and I saw 60 to 80 guys at me, and I said, my shit's in the wind. And all of a sudden, a napalm from an F4 hit that, and he said, I was standing there looking at nothing but charred bodies, some of which had already crumpled to the ground, others that were still standing there burning. Yeah. And he said, thank God. So, you know, then, then you guys paid a big, big price. And then the forward air controller was shot. It was then so the intense. Foreign, there were two, so people, intense. two people. The English and the other guy, the other captain. Yep, it was so intense, they got, intense, shot, they got shot down. And, that's and they, they would get their body by 10.30, 10.45 later that morning. But uh, uh, then we had two other OV-10s show up, and they were running, I understand. 38 sorties all together. Right. And uh, how many, no A-10s, but there no were A10s. fours? No, no. There were, there were uh, thuds and... Uh, okay, one of fours. And uh, no. uh, no, one anyone, one one I want to know, were there A-1Es there? Were the Sky Raiders, the old World War II no, prop no, jobs? No, no, no. Those were, that all... was my unit, folks. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to know if I had any when these there. No, no. F1. Thuds, right. I, I think they're all thuds, basically. Okay, okay, but, all know, thuds. They ran 38 sorties. Right. Okay. Right. But it, it was uh, a lot of it's kind of, kind of later on because the. The cloud cover at 6:30 was treetop level. Oh, really? It was when stuck you looked in. across. It was really foggy. You're going, yeah. man, nobody gonna fly in that. And when they came in, it was, you know, when you looked up, it was like, and it was smoky down below. Yeah, from yeah. everything. Right. You know, but it, it would burn off later in the morning. Uh, later, later, later. Yeah. You know, but the, but uh, the big thing was by 9:30, 10 o'clock, this thing was winding down. But I didn't get to the, I hate to say, good part. But for some people, it wasn't a good part. For you guys, it was a good part. Finally, armor did show. You had M48s and you had a VTR. I'm, I'm second to 77. And I was in. I was at one end, and I looked down the southwest, and they were massive down there. Right. If they arrived another five minutes later, I would be talking to you. That's it right. It was that desperate. What happened was uh, ammunition was running low that morning. 2200 rounds. We had us. Second of the 12th came in, I Second think, and was with them. up north. Augmented up yeah. north. Northeast but, uh, corner. Northeast north corner. East. Remember, this whole thing was an egg-shaped uh, thing that ran from the northwest to the southeast, and they were looking at the resistance in each of the various quadrants around that egg-shaped thing. So that's why we can talk quadrants when there were the invasion. They were overran the first time at 7-Eleven that morning, and uh, they that's when the Ford Air Controller showed up, and they were bringing the Air Force in. Later at 8:24 that same morning, one hour later, they were becoming overrun a second time, and this is when they called up to the artillery and said, let's use anti-personnel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is an artillery round that I learned about since I worked in this museum. The beehive. It's called a beehive round. I used to have a beehive uh, that I could show you, but we were handed out a bunch last night. I wanted to get one. If you lay hands on, please give me. I want to get some more of those because I want to show people. Beehives are these little darts that are no bigger than this, and they are so small. If you've all had a chance to see them, they're only an inch and a quarter long, but they would shoot. One shell would emit 1,750 of these things out, and you had an adjustable nose on that shell that could either adjust at the end of the barrel, or it could uh, uh, blow up and open the clamshell uh, up to 30, 40 meters out, and that would adjust the rate of spread. These enemy were so close within 50 meters, and these guys were being overran. They were asking, "Shoot beehive on our round, on yeah. our position," and they would set that thing to zero as soon as it came out of the barrel. Boom. And it sounded just like bees. You you would see leaves floating yeah. down from the trees. You see brushes. You yeah. see limbs falling from the trees. And if you saw bodies whatsoever, you would see bodies just kind of crumple and go down. If it was to have rained within two or three days after those bodies hit the ground, you'd never know why they died because the little bitty spots that would be left mm -hmm. by these things right. would just be washed away. Yeah. You'd throw them up on a gurney and put them into an OR with an x-ray machine. All you see is these Bitty flechettes mm -hmm. that would, and you could screw a body to a tree, mm -hmm. to a wall, and you, animals, anything that was in his path. That. But the thing was, this is what bailed out their bacon that morning because there must have been over 2,000 of these in, uh, VC. Because it was 3, two, two VC. It was a regiment with two reinforced battalions. And they were all VC? Three, 
three thousand. It was ninth VC. It was ninth VC division. We were after. They were VC. It was ninth VC division. We were after. That was the goal. Okay. And it was the two seventy second VC regiment that attacked. That's right. That's right. We were within a kilometer, kilometer and a half of their headquarters. There. That's why they were supplied so well. Right. You know, it was six hundred mortar rounds, about four hundred RPG rounds that hit us. It just was never. For three hours, it was non-stop, automatic exactly right. weapon fire and mortars and everything else. If you weren't moving or dug under, like the infantry at yep. the perimeter, you were going to get hit with something. That's right. Okay? It was like, you know, if you stay in one spot, 50-50, you know, right. right. you're going to get hit. But the beehives, we had 11 out of 18 guns got knocked out. Some came back online. At 41, that was the official count from all the ones that we had. They were experimental round. Not mm -hmm. Not everybody had a, a full complement. They were experimental. That, that was one? experimental. That's the first time ever. Our know. ammo officer, oh, Chase Lanier. There was one other thing about Junction City, which was the overall operation that what we're talking about is a small little part of. Junction City also had the very first and only airborne drop in Vietnam. One Vietnam, Vietnam, about 30, 40 k's oh, away up towards the northern part, part of the Junction City uh, border line. They were going to drop uh, Army Airborne because Westmoreland was a jumper and he had high ranking officers that wanted to have bragging rights that we jumped in Vietnam that, one that time. That was a PR move.